Christy Rouse right in the last lap. Uh, Guyver leads the championship after that victory by an extended lead there on 127.5 points. 95 and a half for Philip Atkinson in second. 70 for James Egan in third. Don't ask me where the point two five comes from. That's too complicated for me. Tom Whedon in fourth place. Fifth place for Chrissy Rouse. Oh, they halved the points after the last round. Right, OK. 11, round, 11 races won so far out of 18. Chrissy Rouse on 53. Piers Hutchings in sixth on 45 and a half of ahead of Christian Elkin, Tom Hayward, Sellers and Ward rounding out the top 10. 11th for Taylor, and uh, I think you can read the rest. Uh, Fuller, Patronen, Cox, Leaning, Stedman, Robertson, Simmons, Hoare and Bateman. The starting grid looks rather like this. We've got Freddie Pett on pole position. The Geordie boy Chrissy Rouse in second place, third for James Egan. The second row headed by the masterful Rob Guyver ahead of South African Philip Atkinson and Tom Hayward in sixth place. Torquil Patterson is in on the heads up row three ahead of David Sellers and Christian Elkin. Daniel Fuller is on row four with Richard Stedman and Piers Hutchins. So the championship handsomely led at the moment by Rob Guyver by 31.75 points. He won yesterday. Uh, we've got someone starting from pit lane, uh, and that's number 18, uh, Mark. Jake Roberts and that. Would have been row on, on <laughs> row. Apparently, dismissively, we've been told he would have been on row eight anyway, so He's why should He's probably going to get a better start from the pit lane, to be fair. <laughs> Off the line, then, we go. And uh, it's a good start for number 81, James Egan, another of the South Africans who's been showing so well in this class. The younger of the two South Africans leads the way, James Egan. No, oh, not quite, though. He gets squeezed out. I think it might have been Chrissy Rouse who's in the squeezing. Yeah, definitely. Blue leathers, Chrissy Rouse, I think. So the leader then is uh, Chrissy Rouse from James Egan as the Triumph Triple 675 TC Daytonas go streaming out into the countryside. Uh, neck and neck as they drop down towards Park. It's Rouse and Egan with Freddie Pear, Tom Hayward, Rob Guyver and Christian Elkin running out the top six. Phil Atkinson back in seventh ahead of Sellers and Stedman. Yeah, conditions are a bit iffy as well, Jack. It's come on to rain again. It's actually stopped raining now. It's not done a lot, uh, but every time the track gets wet, it takes a long it obviously takes longer to dry and it's, it gets cooler so it doesn't you know if you just get a shower on a really warm track it dries up really quick and the, it, that isn't gonna happen now Do you know these triumphs are so narrow that when you see all of them coming towards you like that you think the screen's gone all squashed up yeah do you know why they're obviously they're a three cylinder across the frame instead of a four and that extra cylinder probably makes a round about six inch difference in width of the engine which means you can have a narrow fairing they're a lovely bike actually a lovely road bike a few more cc 675 cc instead of the normal middleweight japanese bike 600 cc4 so they've got a little bit more torque and they're really nice things make a nice noise as well and as they go just howling their way through there's no 675 freddie pet from kings lynn on the dales racing machine running in third place look how wet it is under the trees as they splash through the hairpin yeah, but, and then dive round barn but you see there it's quite dry they're dragging water onto that bit of the track because the trees have actually shielded that last shower it's dead weird what happens here. Chrissy Rouse leads it then by 0.3 of a second from Egan. Freddie Pett in third. Tom Haywood leading the experienced Rob Guyver and Christian Elkin in sixth place. Bill Atkinson struggling a little bit in seventh place, struggling a little bit to be here financially. If anyone can any offer any help to that uh, South African chap running in seventh place, Philip Atkinson living up near Cambridge so now with... Uh, with uh, Steph Waddleow, who was a former racer herself in this category, as we watch her repeat Egan performance the then. This time Egan starts yeah. to make a move, and it's the blue leathered Chrissy Rouse who gets squeezed back to second place. So Egan leads the way ahead of Chrissy Rouse. Egan, who's had some really good results, lying in third place in the championship, never actually achieved a race win. He did have a double second place, remember, at Thruxton. But he's never actually achieved a race when he was twice third at Brands Hatch. And he's trying to hold off at the moment Chrissy Rouse in those beautiful powder blue leathers. Yeah, you're allowed to use wets in this, this class. Some of the single make championships, you're not. You, you're sort of stuck on the tyres that you use in dry and the wet. The, this class is allowed wets. Uh, and I think everybody I saw went out on wets. 
over the top of the mountain course and here they go these two now really are breaking clear they were about they, they were certainly the only guys in the 147 bracket on the last lap so they were quite comfortably quicker than their pursuers but what we saw in these Metzler national super stock race that preceded this race is that the positions changed a lot as conditions changed, changed yeah, 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 as, they, as they dried out different yep. riders would make progress exactly some people uh, happy with the bike sliding around in the way other people when the tire wears out when it you know when it when you get a drying track with wet tires you, it's, they're not sliding because it's wet it's sliding because the tires are getting too warm they're moving around it's not as much sliding as moving in actual fact and some people are not happy with that than others both of these lads at the front james have had second places but no wins both of them have had two second places this year brand Hatch for chrissy rouse and then yesterday here at cadwell park they would they would both like to they would definitely both like to get a race win rob guyver has moved to into third place i said the positions might change as conditions changed and the experienced former runner-up in the 125 gp championship is now there he is lucky 13 for some rob guyver yeah and you know what he was unlucky not to win the championship uh, i think a couple of times we've seen him in it with a real chance with a couple of rounds ago winning the 125 british championship uh, and as quick, quick enough to do it, you know, as quick as anybody in the championship, but then a little bit of bad luck. He crashed when he didn't need to, he broke down a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, he's taken to this 6M5 uh, really well. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea that someone might crash when they needed to, James. That's lovely. No, no, he, you know, he's, he's a, a strange thing that if you're pushing out for a championship, it's last lap of the last round, you go and if you crash, it, it, you kind of almost have to do that. Yeah. But he didn't, he had, he had sort of unforced errors, if you like, you know, he when did. he, you know. When you think that, yeah, that 2009 and 2010, second in the 125 GP Championship, last year third, and uh, each time, you know, it was only between four and 12 points he yep. lost it by. That's right, yeah. So, uh, Rob Guyver then in the hot seat, of course, the generally, definitely the favourite to win this championship at the moment, as we watch this stream of riders dive down out of Farm Corner. And the lads heading down. There goes number 22, a passing move for Daniel Fuller, getting the better there of David Sellers, the local Lincolnshireman, as they dive through the coppice and up through Charlie's one. Chrissy Rouse leads the way at the moment and back in front of James Egan. So Rouse with them, 140.254. Look how the times have dropped. Seven seconds they've carved off their lap times, and we're only on the fourth lap of ten. Yeah, but that's not so much to do with conditions changing, Jack, although it, it is drying out slightly. Confidence. It's just confidence and knowing where the grip is and where the grip isn't. You know, it'd be stupid to go out there and try and break the lap record not knowing where it's slippy and how slippy it is. So Chrissy Rouse, James Egan, Rob Guyver at the front, Freddie Pett, Tom Haywood and Christian Elkin round out the top six. Atkinson still seventh. And then this battle going on here with uh, number six, Tom Haywood, Christian Elkin, Atkinson's in there, Stedman, Sellers and Fuller. They're all clambering all over one another. There's Rob Guyver pushing now for second place. Here he comes, the experienced Guyver, who, remember, had an absolutely staggering ride. Uh, once in the uh, in the British 125 GP at Donington Park, where he actually he actually had just passed Marco Simoncelli when he crashed in the rain. So obviously a pretty skilled wet weather merchant. Yeah, Rob Guyver now closing the gap. I remember seeing it. Uh, also, uh, James Lodge did the same race. He crashed somewhere as well. He was going well. It was not just wet. It just for some reason seemed unbelievably slippy. It was uh, catching a lot of people out. It wasn't kind of Guyver's fault, you know that. You didn't have to do much wrong to go down the road. Guyver now for a close third. He just has closed the gap on number 81, James Egan. Chrissy Rouse, though, up the road a bit. Oh, well, fastest lap of the race on that lap for Guyver, 139.653. We're on the fifth lap of ten. Rouse, Egan, Guyver, Pett are the four riders at the front. Gavin Here comes Guyver. Yep. Guyver yeah, he... diving, and he does. You can see, if you get that long shot of the straight again, you can see he's definitely drying out because you can see where the overbanding is, where the tarmac's been laid in strips. You can see it's actually drier uh, where the, the strips meet each other. As they drop now down through the gooseneck, I've got a feeling that Chrissy Rouse just might be in danger here because Rob Guyver is turning up the heat on bike number 13. Yeah, he's definitely getting to grips with these conditions now. He's looking for an eighth race win in the championship here, Rob Guyber. He's already got a 31.75 point lead in the title table. He's already got a several decimal place 
lead in the championship table. Number 13, Guyver, comes bobbing over the top of the hill on bike number 13, the RG Racing Triumph 675. There's the leader, number 55, Chrissy Rouse, Hello. on the chrissyrouse.com bike. Well, it's looks. raining in the woods. Ooh, yeah. steady. And you know what? This it actually looks like Rouse has had a good half, last half lap because that looks it does. more than a yeah. second half to me. Well, again, when the conditions have got that bit, the, a little bit more rain for Exactly. Chrissy speeded up again. Yep. Or not slowed slow down, down as much. much. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Oil flags out. I don't know why. Half, half distance. Diminished adhesion. The yeah, flag is out. Look. Chrissy Rouse. Have lap five out of ten leads. Guyver, Egan, Pett, Elkin, Haywood, Fuller, Atkinson, Stedman and Whedon. The oil flag's out. It's the oil flag. It always will be the oil flag for me. I know you've got to call it the diminished adhesion flag. Uh, and it could be anything from gravel to muck to rain on the track. But certainly it's the oil flag. I didn't mean there's oil down. I meant that, yeah. That is, I think that's because it is raining in that section again. And look at this, look at this gaggle coming down here behind Freddie Peck. There's a change of order, several changes of order. You suddenly see who are the lads who are brave enough to trust that front brake into park curve. Yeah, and you've got to actually tip it in there on the brakes. It's not one of them corners where you can re release the brake and turn it in. You're actually dragging the brake a long way into the corner. As they drop down through, the, oh dear me, there were two or three abreast going into the gooseneck, boys. There's the distinctive South African helmet there, uh, number five, Philip Atkinson, currently running in eighth place. He could do with a, a better result than that. He's really been the nearly man of this championship, number yeah. five, Philip Atkinson, for the last two or three years. He actually works in, in kind of uh, as a kind of maintenance engineer with the BBC in London. And although, although he and Steph live up near Cambridge, he travels down into London every day. He works all the hours he can to, to uh, make, get the money together, to scrape the money together to come and do this. Phil Atkinson there, now 29 years old, number five, originally from South Africa. He's just ahead of 169, David Sellers, with the bright orange wheels. And then number seven, Stedman. But uh, oh, as they come out, he's not looking too happy when it gets he's damper, not. Philip Atkinson. In fact, he's sitting up there as if he was looking for some kind of instruction from his pit bull. <laughs> he's not going to get none from them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're on your own, son. That looked a bit like a sort of shall I stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Chrissy Rose at the front has a 2.3 second advantage. He's opened it up again. Could he be in line for his Yet first he... win of the series? Yeah. Chrissy Rouse, who uh, back in, in, in back last year finished uh, 15th in the Sunoco British 125 GP Championship. It actually looks dry around the top end there. All those uh, drops of rain on the camera lens. It definitely looks dry around Chris's curve. And look and at this, number, eight, number 81, Hagen has been caught by 675. Pith. Freddie Pett right on the back wheel now of the South African. Number 675, you see what they've done there? With oh, the rest of us, you see. Yeah. It hadn't yeah. occurred to me. <laughs> our, our, our Super C checking out his leathers, of course. It's the, it's the great Barnard Castle Jimmy Ed leather. Scott leathers there being proudly announced off the back of number 675. Freddie Pett, who's going for third place. He got a good drive over the mountain. James Egan cuts him off into hall bends. If you notice, all the South Africans will have RST leathers on. That same ones I wear. They're brilliant leathers. Ah, yes. And it's the gates. Johnny Towers, who is a South African, uh, well, originally, tends to help out the uh, South African riders. South African with, with contingent. The contingent, the chapter, that's what we the, call it. Although she was born in Huddersfield, a very South African sounding lady who was operating the gate at the top of the hill. Oh, oh we've got a faller here. Number seven's gone down, and it, that was uh, Stedman's gone down. That's an airfield, he'll be wasn't, all right. He wasn't enjoying the conditions too much. Number seven, Richard Stedman, he's from Skegness. Well, not on the Dales racing bike, he kind of slipped back a bit. He's not far to walk back from there. <laughs> Oh, uh, somebody else off. The, this is number 65. That will be... Uh, oh, we haven't got a 65, no, we haven't. so we've no idea who that is. Obviously, Mar Marshall's having a... Have a that's, how, that's how slippery the glass the the grass is. The bike was undamaged. It's 666 Piers Hutchins who's yeah, gone down, yeah. the Londoner on the Carl Rosner Diablo 666 HM racing bike. Same place as obviously... Oh, that's others. right, that's it, boys, keep one another company. The bike was undamaged before the marshals got their hands on it. <laughs> oh, there you go, it's hairpin again. That was I mean, very gentle and you know stylish. What? You think you're not moving at the hairpin, you think you're doing about five miles an hour when you go around it, then you see a bike slide off and it goes sort of 50 yards on its side, you realise that even at the slowest corner on the track, you're still moving fairly quick. 
Chrissy Rouse is now uh, the, the gap seems to have shrunk a little bit again on the last lap Guyver did another fastest lap of the race 139.474 and this is the section of the track where we know it's been wet and we know there's been riders down so let's have a look oh steady boys Freddie Petz got past Egan into third place and Christian Elkin is threatening the South African as well as they come over the crest there Elkin number eight Watch it at the hairpin. I suppose if you see a little gaggle of fallen machines, it catches then your eye. You'd be surprised how thick some people can be, <laughs> and that include myself. Oh, look, somebody's fallen off. Scrape. <laughs> Chrissy Rouse uh, leads now by... He's responded a bit on that lap. 1.18 seconds. Look at this. Christian Elkin, number eight, goes slivering through. So Randall's Town's very own Strat's own McCready Racing Triumph mounted. Christian Elkin pounces and moves through into fourth place that will be yep fourth place is past Egan who's now also under pressure from number 22 Fuller Daniel Fuller from Middleton under Witchwood that sounds very sweet <laughs> where that is sounds like some off a, a, a murder mystery program on TV though. or animals of farthing wood yes yes Chrissy Rouse Rob Guyver 1.18 seconds separated them at the front at the end of the last lap James Egan suffering as it gets that little bit damper again yep. dropped back through the field these conditions are difficult to read. You know, it's raining on one part of the course, it's a little bit drier on other parts. It's, you know, you've got to push to the limit. It's not that easy. So me, I've always wanted to... I mentioned the lady who was born in Huddersfield. They're operating the, the gate crossing at the top of the hill here. Yep. Who uh, actually support, helps to support Philip Atkinson. And, uh, you know, ask someone if they've got any spare cash to help him out. But she, although she sounds very South African, she's actually uh, Huddersfield-born, lass. Oh, look at this. Oh, no, no, number 22. David Fuller, he was going so well, he slithered off unharmed at the bottom of the mountain. Fuller was driving strongly there. Oh, Chrissy Honest, Rouse is out. That's him done. There's something, something's hanging touring. off his bike. He's touring, I don't know what's happened. There's Philip Atkinson going past. Oh, the Geordie boy's out. Oh, something, some problems struck. There's number 13, Rob Guyver. He had closed the gap and he's been gifted the lead there on lap nine. The final lap in progress, and Rob Guyver has the lead. I just wonder if Rouse has been off, you know. This is what happened to Fuller. Yeah, he's a bit wide. Yeah, that'll do it. He's not oh, getting off so quick, is he? That's <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, lad, you're not saving it from there. That's pretty elegant. <laughs> he's finally decided it's not going to happen. A nice avoiding action from Tom Haywood. Looks like Chris a gear, gear lever broken to me. They're going down for the left-hand side of the bike. Looks like the gear lever. No, dear linkage. Chrissy Rose, who uh, last time he was here, of course, was on a 125 bike, but here is uh, the final lap then for Rob Guyver, and it's uh, a lap of honour, really, because Guyver is going to take victory here on bike number 13. Uh, it's, it's, uh, turned, Rob Guyver turned to 27 on the 4th of this month, so this is a, a pretty belated birthday present to himself, getting a double race victory at Cadwell Park, but he's proven that he can ride all the conditions here, whether wet or dry. When he was the drying line, he got quicker, and then as it started to get wet, he regrouped and got quicker again. So here we go, Rob Guyver is going to take a second race win of the weekend in the Triumph Triple Challenge and further extend his lead in the championship. Steady, so we're doing that. <laughs> so, the 2002 BMC 125 GP champion Rob Guyver from Rainham in Essex, Dave Chinrod Guyver crosses the line and uh, delighted with that race win because he had to come a long way through the field, it took him a while to get there. Second place goes to Freddie Pett, that will surprise him. Third place to Christian Elkin, fourth to A. Egan, just hangs on in front of Tom Wheaton and Tom Haywood. David Sellers, of course, uh, crosses the line in seventh place. There's Philip Atkinson, not looking happy in these conditions. He finishes eighth ahead of Torquil Patterson, the Scotsman there. Recognise the helmet. And number 32, the delightfully named Leaning, crosses the line next. Not leaning too far in, this, uh, in, these, co in these conditions. The, uh, Will Leaning of uh, Winterton on the WLR Triumph. But the race winner, Rob Guyver, Averages, it's surprising when you see 77 and a half miles, miles an hour. hour average speed yep. in these conditions yep. on this track, and that's uh, involving corners of less than 20 miles an hour or 20 ish. It's a really, but yeah, really no, it is, yeah, 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 deeply impressive. <laughs>
everybody looking very pleased uh, i think that that very large gentleman's the man who proudly nicknamed rob guyver chinrod so rob guyver completes 10 laps there he goes on that lovely little triumph are we supposed to read the, the words on that on that fairing even at that speed robert no yeah, that, and that's at 2,000 frames a second. Uh, we, we, apparently, we're reliably informed we might be able to win HD next week. We'll have to have a look. So Rob Guyver scarcely getting off the ground over the mountain. That's definitely the lowest flight we've seen. Uh, here are the results of the 2012 Triumph Triple Challenge race two at Cadwell Park. Uh, the second race victory of the weekend for Rob Guyver. Rob Guyver, who uh, was a long-standing star of the 125 GP series, decided to move up onto this 675 Triumph for 2012 and has been a dominant part of it. Uh, this lad, James Egan, though, hasn't got that... Well, neither he nor Chrissy Rouse have got that elusive race victory yet. Egan finished in fourth place. Off the start. Uh, a great start by number 81, James Egan. He flew off the line. Chrissy Rouse in the bright blue leathers followed him through. And it was Rouse who uh, out-muscled the South African into Charlie's and took the lead early on. And then breaking hard down to Park Curve, James Egan retook the lead from Chrissy Rouse. Could he hold his line? Yes, he did. But then Rouse cleared off at the front. Rob Guyver began to regroup and broke, broke through into third place. As it got drier, he launched an assault down the dry line into Park Curve. He moves past Egan into second place. Rob Guyver, the championship leader, moving on as two riders. That one, Piers Hutchins, go down at the hairpin where it was getting particularly damp after another bout of rain. And uh, three abreast coming down the main straight. There's Christian Elkin, number eight, making a move past James Egan. And then down goes number 22, David Fuller. Spins out at the foot of the mountain. And problems from just behind him, rolling through behind him already. Chrissy Rouse, the race leader, has a technical issue with the Triumph on the penultimate lap. And as the Geordie boy rolls to a halt, it's Rob Guyver who inherits the lead and his second race win of the weekend. Guyver takes it and extends his lead in the 2012 championship. Elkin finishes in third place ahead of Egan, Whedon and Tom Haywood. Well done, Rob Guyver. Rob Guyver then wins it. Freddie Pett in second place on number 675. Christian Elkin, number eight, finished third, ahead of James Egan and Tom Whedon. Uh, Tom Hayward in sixth. David Sellers uh, remounted to finish in seventh place, so he did manage to get back aboard, ahead of Philip Atkinson, Torquil Patterson and William Leaning. Eleventh for Cox, ahead of Banda, Hoare, Taylor and Robertson. They were the point scorers. Uh, Ward and the... Uh, Desperately unlucky, Chrissy Rouse didn't make it into that top 15. So the championship standings look rather like this. 152.5 and a clear lead for Rob Guyver ahead of Philip Atkinson. Third place for James Egan, so it's a South African 2-3. Tom Whedon is in fourth place. Christian Elkin moves past the desperately unfortunate Chrissy Rouse into fifth place. Tom Hayward is now just behind Rouse in seventh place. Sellers is 8th, 9th Pierce Hutchins, 10th for Tom Ward. 11th, 11th for Taylor, ahead of David Fuller and Will Leaning. And then it's Cox, Patronen, Richard Stedman, Hoare, Robertson, Simmons and Banda rounding out the top 20. Yeah, just here talking to Christian Elkin about the uh, very changeable conditions out there. And you were saying, Christian, that throughout the race it was very patchy and got very wet up at Hall Bends under the trees. Yes, it was very, very slippy at the airpin. It was out of seat a couple of times, but I knew I had, uh, I knew I had good pace in the wet from uh, Saturday's practice. Um, so I knew if it was wet, I could run up there. So really chuffed. So once you found yourself in that third place spot, it was just a case of getting your head down, keeping the momentum going. And did you know that you were in third at the end of the race, given that Chrissy had dropped out? Yes, I saw him uh, just coming down to Mansfield on the last lap. I saw that he was, uh, he had his leg out, so he obviously had a mechanical problem or ran out of fuel or something. So I was really chuffed. It's great for Stratstone McCready. Racing, really chuffed. Yeah, great performance, really good ride. We'll let you go to the podium and enjoy it. Well done. Thank you. Christian Elkin there, our third place finisher. Let's get Freddie Pett in here. Freddie, yeah, stop debriefing with Rob Guyver. Freddie, you stand there. Um, how was the race from your point of view? At times, it looked like everything was going on. A bit hectic, especially when you had the odd tussle with Rob. 
Yeah, no, it was, it was a cracking race, really. When the rain started to come down, I was gutted because I've qualified on pole twice now in both the dry, and I knew I could do it in the dry, but being my first race back since my big injury, I didn't want to risk it in the wet. The chances of crashing were so much higher, and I couldn't afford to crash, so when it come down, I was gutted, but then I went out of there, Felt all right, so I had a little wobble around and come second, so. Not bad for a little wobble around there, and you're so right around here at Caswell Park. When it is wet, it's so easy for others to tip off, as you would have seen coming through Hall Bends. What was going through your mind when you saw bikes on the floor around there? I was just trying to stay smooth, really. Stay calm, stay smooth. Just just riding with him as I really want, didn't want to risk nothing. Slow and steady and got to the finish, really. I don't know about slow and steady. You bagged a fine second place, another 20 points in the bag. We'll let you go to the podium. Well done. Yeah, I just want to say a quick thank you for all my sponsors for staying by me whilst I've been off injured with my back and everything. Um, Baker Bodycraft, uh, CNA Superbikes, um, HAC Helmets, Still Clean, uh, Mum, Dad, and all the doctors and physio that have got me back on track. And it's great to see you did a great performance. Off you go, well done, mate. Yes, thank you. There you go, Freddie Pett. Yeah, been through the wars with his back, has Freddie, but he's back now and back again on top of the podium is Rob Guyver. Well, what was going through your mind when you saw Chrissy by the side of the track there, Rob? Because you've made a brilliant run through the field to get back up to be in contention, and then Chrissy's out. Yeah, I mean, um, I got to a point where I see I had a comfortable gap, and I see Chrissy in front, and I would just, just settle him, really. And uh, I, see, I see just a bolt shoot out the side of his bike, and he was looking down, and I thought, oh, no. But, um, you know... He should have won that, really. But uh, congrats. Unlucky for him. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'll take the points. And it's been fantastic for me. What a brilliant weekend. Second win of the weekend. He proved to have done it in all weathers. The Rob Guyver grin is most definitely back. Uh, Chimrod Guyver. <laughs> Off you go to the podium. Well done. Yeah, can I just say a quick shout-out to um, Steve Allison, Buddy Bo and Stella watching at home. Nicely done. I hope you guys to go spray that champagne. Uh, he will make his way up the stairs to the uh, podium. Elevated one here at Cadwell Park in front of a very big crowd on the bank opposite. And Jack will take us through it. Uh, it's great to see the vehicle sprayer from Rainham in Essex back uh, on top of the podium. Uh, we'll expect to see Guy Masters, the general manager of Triumph, presenting the trophies to these fellas. 